What is up, Palos Verde students? This is Mr. Hill coming to you with a quick little Apex tutorial, how to get going, how to get started, what are the main functions. We are currently looking at the dashboard right now. This is where your classes are listed. This is where you can see at a glance how you're doing in your classes, your grade to date, your progress towards the end of the semester, overdue activities, and a couple other really nice functions. So first of all, you can see I'm only enrolled in one course, but had I been enrolled in five or six courses, you would see them right here under. Each course, you're gonna have these three things located right here. The first is your percentage, your grade to date. How are you doing with the points that have already been assigned this far in the semester? As you can see, not very good. I am not a strong math student. I need to continue to, to work on that with my teacher. But this is your um, a nice indicator, uh, an easy way to follow along with your specific classes. If I look at this percentage and say, okay, I'm not doing very well, how can I improve on this? By clicking on that percentage, it's gonna take you to what they call the enrollment details report. This has got a lot of good stuff. This is gonna tell you, first of all, what have you done? I've, I've taken a quiz on algebraic properties and expressions. I got a four out of 20, not very good. So it shows your percentages on assignments. It also, in this kind of peach color over here, is going to show me the assignments that I'm missing. These are overdue or late assignments. And so these are the assignments that I'm going to have to go back and complete because right now it's really dragging down my grade. So this shows our assignments. What have I had to do? How well have I done on them? And it even shows upcoming assignments. What do I have coming up in the upcoming dates? When are they due? All of these things. So a really, really nice tool is this enrollment details report. And again, how do you find this enrollment details report? Just by clicking on the percentage in any particular class on your dashboard. So as I wait for this to go back to my dashboard here, we can continue. Here we go. All right, so other things that we have uh, is the progress bar. This progress bar is just gonna show you where you're at as far as the overall semester. As you can see, I'm only 6% complete with the semester, but it also tells me I'm behind schedule. I've got those three overdue activities. I need to make sure I make up those activities so that I can you know, continue to work on time. Now, another really nice function from the dashboard is the calendar over here. Now. Um, because it's not associated with a particular class, by clicking on this calendar, you can see your work for all of your classes, due dates, upcoming assignments, etc. All of this would be filled in on the calendar. And of course, you can skip on to, I'm in July now, you can skip on to August or September, what have you. You can see what you have upcoming um, in our course. And so that's really nice, or all of your courses having the ability to do so. So, um, all right, let's take a look at the actual class. Um, here is Algebra 1, Semester 1. And a couple of things you should know. First of all, um, all of Apex courses are divided up into units. And each unit is divided up into lessons. And the lessons all have very similar components. So first of all, as you can see, here I am in Algebra 1. Um, I've already worked through Lesson 1.1 and 1.2. So if I click this orange button, which is something students will be doing all the time, you're going to resume on where you left off. By pressing this button, it's going to take me to where I want to go. As you can see, we're in Unit 1. You can't access the other units yet. This is a, a course, of course, where you have to go through the units sequentially. So we'll start off with, with unit one, which is the foundations of algebra. So I'll click on that, and you can see some of the kind of common functions that you would see in the different lessons. First of all, oftentimes there is a pretest that allows teachers to assess where you are, what do you remember from the previous year, or what do you remember from the previous unit. So that's a, a nice way teachers can enable the function to actually allow you to test out of certain activities if you perform well on that pretest. So kind of a nice function there. Now this is a, a look at a sample lesson. One of the lessons that you're gonna encounter right away, there are three things that you're always gonna have in your lessons. And there may be more. There may be discussion boards, interactive activities, but there will always be three functions on there. The study, the checkup, and the quiz. There'll be a quiz for every single lesson. Now the study is really the heart of the lesson. This is where students are gonna do, be doing a lot of their learning. 
this is kind of the, the lecture component, the learning component of the lesson. The study is, is, is the content. It's got what you're supposed to be learning, right? And so we're learning today in lesson 1.1 on the rational and irrational numbers. So you can look and see some important vocabulary. They're telling us what a natural counting number is, a whole number, all these things. And this has 17 pages, right? So this is a, this is a sizable lesson. And that's a lot of information to take in. That's a lot to learn. Are there some helpful tools that can help you learn this rather than just having you read through this on their own? I'm so glad you're asked. Yes, there are lots of great helpful tools. Let's take a look. First of all, one that's kind of nice is you can have it read to you. You can click this button here. When you work with numbers, it's helpful to know more about how they are organized into types. Charming. Very charming, yes. So you can click this, it's gonna read it to you. So if you're someone that likes to hear it read to you, of course you can do that. I myself am that way, I want it read to me and I wanna read it at the same time. But how are you gonna organize all this stuff? I'll organize all your learning, there's 17 pages, how you know what's gonna be on the quiz. That's where this little thing comes into handy, the study guide. So you click on this study guide and the study guide is gonna give you essentially guided notes for the entire study, the entire lecture, what you're learning. And so what you're able to do is print this study guide out previously, and then as you go through the study, you define key terms. It's also got sample questions for you. When I go on to page two down here, it's saying, okay, write two fifths as a decimal. How would I do that, right? And so you practice these things, you write these things down. Some teachers may ask that you do the study guide as a, an assignment so that you can turn in. And this is directly what's gonna help you on the lesson quiz and then eventually the unit test. The study guide is a huge component of Apex Learning. It's, it's, it's one of the most important functions and it's a really helpful function for students. A couple of other kind of cool functions that you have on here. Um, it, one of which is the, the translate button right here. So if you're an English learner, and this is all very overwhelming with 17 pages of, of learning to take place, you can actually translate into 30 different languages. Wow, they've got Swahili on there, it's awesome. So look, they got all these different languages, you can translate the lesson, you can learn it that way, that's pretty cool. Um, of course, you can print out anything that you want, so if you prefer to have this you know, read through it and be able to go back and have it right in front of you so you can mark it up and touch it. Of course, you can do that. So this is our study. This is where a lot of the, the, the learning takes place. And then you're gonna prepare yourself to learn, uh, to take a quiz, right? So let's get out of this uh, aspect of, of the learning, of the study, and let's go to the checkup. Now the checkup is practice questions. This is going to be kind of the kind of questions that you're going to see on your quiz. They're going to be multiple choice. Some of them are going to be true, false. So as you come through and, and you complete this checkup, this is kind of assessing where you're at. If you're struggling with a particular part or a particular type of question, obviously then you need to go back and look at your study guide or go back and look at the study and be able to uh, review that particular type of question, right? So you got all these practice questions here. Um, and you have the, the functionality to show the answers if your teacher enables it so that you can check your work and see how you do it. Some teachers may not enable you to show the answers because they want to assign it as a particular type of assignment, which of course is completely up to your teacher. And then we have, last but not least, we'll go into the quiz. And the quiz is typically 10 to 20 questions depending on your grade level. This one is 20 questions. and this multiple choice quiz is the real deal. This is gonna be graded, you're gonna get points for this. And so you wanna make sure you're ready to start this quiz and take this quiz in its entirety. Also, it should be noted for students that there are several versions of the quiz. So don't just think that, oh, your partner can take it or your, your partner, someone else is taking it and you can check in with them. No, this is something that's individual. Um, the academic integrity of these quizzes is extremely important. You should be taking these on your own. Um, and once you start it again, you have to complete it and we'll take a look at what it looks like. So here we go, we're starting this. Um, okay. An the number 0 0.333 repeats forever, therefore is irrational. Ooh, I'm gonna say false on this one, right? And so we got all these questions. 
I am not positive on if I'm getting these right or wrong, but I do want you to take a look and see what happens at the end of this quiz, because that's important on whether you can move on to the next lesson or not. So here I am submitting my 10 questions and how'd I do? Ooh, 30%. All right, so that's not very good. I earned only six out of those 20 points. Now you can see right here it says contact your teacher. And that's because you need a 70% or higher on these quizzes to move on to the next lesson. And so you actually physically cannot move on to the next lesson until you speak with your teacher and go over how you did and why you missed these questions. And so oftentimes this will be done with teacher office hours. But look, you can see this red exclamation mark over a quiz that's saying, nope, sorry, you can't move on, contact your teacher. You would do that through email or probably more likely by going to your teacher's office hours or speaking up in class. Notice in this case, if I wanted to move on to lesson 1.2, they're all locked. You see these locks, I can't move on to the next lesson. All right, guys, that is the basis of Apex Learning. There's a lot of really very intuitive functions. Um, your teachers can add in material as you go um, that is not in the actual curriculum, but can be added for whatever kind of activities the teacher wants to add from their own curriculum. And so that's pretty cool. Um, it's very hands-on. You can work at your own pace, but you have pacing guides to make sure that you are uh, following along at an appropriate pace. All right, guys, thanks very much for listening and enjoy your Apex learning.